ultimately the end result is that people have confidence in retirement, which is the whole goal. Uh, if you have a plan that's simple, easy to understand, easy to implement, easy to follow, you're going to feel better about your retirement plan. And that's the entire goal of the course of this podcast and really of everything that we do, a plan that leads to confidence. Hello, and welcome to Simplify Your Retirement with Stephen Strickland from Wise Wealth. Hello, Stephen. Glad to be back in this beautiful studio. Paul, it's uh, it's great to be back. We've had a little bit of a break here between uh, the last season and this one, and uh, really eager and looking forward to getting back at it here. Absolutely. This is a beautiful new studio. Uh, well, the setup, the way it is in here, and the exciting part about this is the reason we took a break to build out the studio is to be able to be on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. So people are able to watch this and not just listen to yeah. it. And so definitely appreciate you taking the time and the resources to be able to build this out uh, so that we can have guests in here. We mm -hmm. can have guests uh, dial in and yeah. talk to us still, but yet tell you these yeah. are comfortable chairs yeah <laughs> someone should stop by and sit in them sometime right exactly well it definitely turned out great uh definitely uh, we have the wise wealth colors going on in here and uh and like you said it's very comfortable uh soundproofing as, as best as we can here inside the inside the office with uh um uh, we have a train of course that goes by here uh from time to time we have other noises that go by here in the office but it's great to be in this room soundproof as much as possible and um like you said uh, there's a lot of people that learn a lot of different ways yeah and uh, we want to to reach everybody so we have uh, obviously the book that people can read mm -hmm. simplify your retirement uh we've got um uh the audio version of this people can listen to the podcast yes. and now for the people that want to watch as well uh, they'll be able to watch the podcast on YouTube. So we're excited to welcome everybody who's watching us for the first time um, on YouTube or on video. Yeah, absolutely. And on top of that, not only do are some people auditory or visual learners or they learn better by reading, but some are more hands-on interactive. And so we also have the live class as well. Mm -hmm. And then we have an online class as well. Right. So a lot of different ways for people to be able to learn. And part of that is because right. of who we are at Wise Wealth. We are an education-based financial planning firm. That's right. And I think it's one of the things that really make us stand apart. Yes. Um, <clears throat> we're education-based. People, Most people know by now that I used to be a high school teacher and a coach. That's how I got started. My first career for six years was teaching and coaching. And it's something that really has never left me and who I am. Thus, the name of our firm, Wise Wealth, which is first wisdom, then wealth. And then, of course, everything that we do uh, for our clients, Wise Wealth University, which is kind of a uh, course that we have or classes that we offer to people who become clients of Wise Wealth. And then, of course, there's this one, Simplify Your Retirement, really is the introduction to our firm, our philosophy, and those kinds of things. And so uh, anybody can go to wisewealth.com slash events, and they should see any of our upcoming Simplify Your Retirement, doc, uh, so, sorry, Simplify Your Retirement workshops coming up. We always have them listed on the events page. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I, I know that all of that matters and words matter and all of that. And so I, I know how important... Mm -hmm. all of this is to you. I mean, in the fact that you took time uh, to get the wise wealth logo mm -hmm. with the slogan first wisdom and wealth as a federally registered trademark. Right. And the same with simplify your retirement, right. same thing, be able to get a federally registered trademark. And so, <clears throat> uh, you know, those yeah. are important things when, when, when you understand that something is important, then you take the time mm -hmm. to be able to say, this is important enough that I want to make a point for everyone right. watching, everyone who interacts with us to know this is important. And education <clears throat> right. is part of who we are. And Absolutely. So definitely appreciate that. Right. Appreciate that. And, and we want people to know, like you're saying, if, if it's uh, it's something that we say, and, and sometimes people may get the impression, well, everybody talks about Simplify Your Retirement. Well, not everybody does talk about Simplify Your Retirement. There's a lot of people in the industry uh, that make it more complicated than it needs to be. Mm -hmm. uh, they tend to value uh, complexity, and therefore you have to have this financial advisor to explain this plan to you each and every day and every year. You can't understand it because you're this uh, peon down here. Only us trained financial advisors can understand <laughs> these things. And we yeah. say, uh, no, everyone should be able to understand it. You have to have a plan that you can understand 
And because it's not just because we want you to understand it, it's because we know that if you understand it, you'll act on it. And we know that in order to be successful as a, an investor, as a retirement uh, in retirement planning is to take action. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to take action unless you understand it. And then uh, ultimately, the end result is that people have confidence in retirement, which is the whole goal. Uh, if you have a plan that's simple, easy to understand, easy to implement, easy to follow, you're going to feel better about your retirement plan. And that's the entire goal of the course of this podcast and really of everything that we do, a plan that leads to confidence. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I know that's part of the pod, part of the reason that we do the podcast is for that education and to be able to help people, in a sense, have a shared language as well. Mm-hmm. Right. And so when we talk about things, we're going to dive into a phrase today. Mm-hmm. But it's important mm-hmm. because the words matter. But when we all understand what the words mean, so we have a same right. point of reference, mm-hmm. then it becomes easier for reviews, for conversations, mm-hmm. for questions about the plan, because we have a shared language. And well, that's we, important. we've spent uh, seasons in the past talking about our three bucket approach. It's yeah. no secret how we handle people's retirement, the plans that we put together. And so uh, when we talk about liquid buckets, income buckets, growth buckets, people can go back and listen to previous podcasts on those topics. But that's just an example of what you're talking about. When we get our clients together, we can say words like your income bucket and, and everyone knows what we mean. Yeah, exactly. And so in that, in that uh, strain of thought here mm-hmm. is the fact that last season, we spent a whole season talking about the mission of Wise Wealth. So what is the mission of Wise Wealth? Uh, the mission of Wise Wealth is to guide families on a path that makes work optional and to give them a plan that leads to the freedom to give and serve and enjoy life like never before. Yeah, give, serve, and enjoy life. And that's what we focused on last season. Uh, the whole We spent the whole season breaking it down, talking about what does each thing mean to give, mm-hmm. to be able to serve, to be able to enjoy life. And we had uh, other professionals on right. with us, and we had clients on with us mm-hmm. talking about how they live that in day in and day out, and how <clears throat> even here at Wise Wealth, you've created a culture here mm-hmm. where we model that out. Not just right. talk about it, but we model it out for our clients to be able to see as well. <clears throat> And, and you mentioned a second ago how, you know, when something's important to me, to us, we trademark it. Yes. And so, you know, we mentioned that first wisdom, then wealth. We register, we federally register, trademark that term. Simplify your retirement. That mm-hmm. mattered to us. So we register, we, we had a federal registration for that. And you just mentioned the second part of our mission, which was the focus of the entire season last year in the podcast give, serve, enjoy life. What I love about that is we have a hashtag that we created, hashtag G-S-E-L, mm-hmm. which stands for give, serve, and enjoy life. It wouldn't you know, it was so important to me, that hashtag, that we got a federal registered trademark for that too. Yeah. And I and, and I say that, you know, but it's a big deal. In other words, we believe in this so much, we think it ought to be a thing, and we want our clients to know about it. And uh, so we have three so far. Another one that we want to get a, a trademark for is one we're going to talk about today, actually. Mm-hmm. So I won't, uh, I won't jump the gun, but there are several things that we believe that we talk about that we say constantly mm-hmm. and uh, that, that are unique to us in the language that we say, there may be people that talk about all these same things. Yeah. There's a lot of people who deal you know, obviously with retirement planning and these same concepts. Uh, but in the specific way that we say it, if we feel like it's unique, then we're going to get that uh, trademark. And so one of them is hashtag G S E L. Yep. And absolutely. And you can go out on social media. If, if anyone listening or watching, if you're not following wise wealth on social media, mm-hmm. on Instagram, on Facebook, follow, uh, you know, our marketing director, Ashley mm-hmm. does a great job of being able to put out content too, of showing people internally. So within the wise wealth team, mm-hmm. as well as even clients and people that we interact with being able to give, serve, right. and enjoy life. And so yeah. great to follow along. You also get a, it's a way to keep updated yeah. on what's going on with Wise Wealth and all of that. And like you said, uh, last season in the podcast, that's really what it was all about. Yep. Uh, we took all three of those sections. We had experts in those three areas. We had clients talk about how they're doing this during retirement. And so if you have any uh, you know questions about what does that all mean to give, serve, and enjoy life, uh, definitely we have 12 episodes from uh, last season that you yep. can listen to about those. Absolutely. And so 
Again, the mission is to guide families on a path that makes work optional and to design a plan that empowers the freedom to give, serve, Mm -hmm. and enjoy life. And so we focus on the last part of it. Mm -hmm. But today we want to take a step back a little bit and look at a phrase at the beginning that not everyone talks about. And it is something that's it's a little bit different. And I know when I sit down and talk with people mm-hmm. in our first meeting, we're just getting to know people, finding out what their goals and dreams are, who they are, collecting a number oh. of stories, not mm-hmm. just a story of numbers from them. You know, one of the things that when I talk about this, this phrase triggers something in their mind mm-hmm. because they haven't really heard this before. And that is the idea of making work optional. Mm -hmm. So how would you define for all our listeners today, how would you define making work optional? Making work optional. I I love the topic uh, of today's show because it's something that we really don't talk a lot about. We don't Mm -hmm. talk about the end of it, the end result, which is confidence, giving, serving, enjoy life. But the mission begins with this phrase uh, to um, to guide families on a path that makes work optional. Mm-hmm. And as you have alluded to already, and all of these words matter. There's no words that we really use here that are accidental. They're all purposeful. Yes. And so when we put this together, certainly the words, you know, guiding families on a path that makes work optional, that was intentional. And so it is very important for people to understand that phrase. So making work optional to us means planning for a day when you no longer work for a paycheck. Making work optional is planning for a day when you no longer work for a paycheck. Mm -hmm. So I would love for people just to sit back and and think about that just for a minute. Imagine a day in the future where you wake up in the morning and you're not having to get dressed and get ready for work. Imagine a day in the future where you don't have to get up and fight traffic to get into the office. Mm -hmm. Imagine a day in the future where you don't have to try to connect your computer to Zoom and and hope it all connects and all these things that we do on a day-to-day basis. So one day in the future, where you wake up and you don't have to go leave the house in order to get a paycheck. That means that you have a paycheck coming in. That means there's a day in the future where you're still going to get paid. You're still going to be able to have the lifestyle and pay for all your expenses. So you've planned for that day, but you don't have to work to do that. Mm. And so that is an extremely important concept to, to be able to get to a place where um, you don't have to exchange your time or your expertise in order to get paid. And, and the reason why this concept is important is because a lot of people, they may work a job that provided for their family. They may be in a situation where the job, the situation they were in was the right thing for them to do for all these years, but it's really not what they're passionate about. It's not what they actually love to do. If, if they, you know, sometimes people get a question like, what would you do if you could do anything you want, but you don't have to worry about a paycheck? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so it's kind of the same concept. Yeah. Get to that place in your life where you can now do whatever you want to do, but not worry about getting a paycheck to do it. Mm. Yeah. And you know, this was actually highlighted for me recently. I was talking with someone um, who's actually a client of wise wealth, but Mm -hmm. it was interesting because it was a holiday weekend and we were just having a conversation about how they had the ability to go out and see their daughter and help out. Mm -hmm. And he said, normally, I have to leave at like 10 o'clock in the morning, get back, get ready for the next day and everything. But it was a holiday weekend. Mm -hmm. So he's like, it was nice because we were able to stay later and I didn't have to worry about getting back and rushing around and thinking and getting ready for the day. And so it's not just the day of, but it's even all the stress that we all feel heading into Mm -hmm. the next day. You know what right. I mean? Right, absolutely. Because people dread sometimes going to it's work. It's the next or, day. Right, yeah. you can't enjoy the night before and those yeah. kinds of things. And, and, I, and I also want to make a point that uh, this statement does not basically say planning for a day when you no longer have to work. It's it, The concept is planning for a day where you no, have, no longer have to work for a paycheck. Yes. That's the key part of this concept. So in other words, it made it, most people want to continue to be active. Mm-hmm. Uh, they want to be continue to be involved. They want to continue to do something during the years when they don't longer have to work for a paycheck. And that's where maybe a hobby mm-hmm. uh, that you've always wanted to do, you'll have the time to do that. Maybe it is another job. Maybe it's actually working for a company, working at a place, doing a job where uh, you actually might get paid, but you're not dependent on that paycheck. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, you're happy that they're paying you, but you would do it for free if, if, if you had to. Those kinds of things. Yeah. And so you want to get to a place uh, in your life where work is optional, where you're getting up every day. And it could be watching your uh, grandkids. Uh, Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different ways. It may be involved in the mission, giving, serving, and enjoying life. It may be going on a lot lot of vacations for a lot of the years, and and especially in the early years of retirement. Uh, So the goal is uh, to guide families on a path that makes work optional. Yeah. That day when you no longer have to work for a paycheck. Yeah. So, so that's what what mm-hmm. it is, but yep. the, the bigger question is why is that important? Yeah, yeah. For most people, you know, you spend your whole life in uh, planning for that day, and and I think it's the right thing to do to be prepared for a day when, uh, when you're not dependent on, like I said earlier, exchanging time or value for a paycheck. Um, it's important to do that because uh, there's there's other things that, you know, you spend 40 hours a week, uh, you spend 50 weeks out of the year, you spend a lot of time doing a job in exchange for a paycheck. It's nice to be able to get to a place where uh, you have freedom. And that's why we use that word. Mm-hmm. Um, people tend to get the most fulfillment when they're able to give back. And we've talked a lot about this. It's more blessed to give than to receive. So to be in a position where you can give Whatever that is, it could be financially, it could be mm-hmm. time, it could be other things, um, expertise, you know, to, to be at a place where you can actually have the free time to serve uh, every day. All of us are, you know, confronted with needs that are out there, uh, that there are organizations that really need help. They really need volunteers. And it's like, well, that would be great. I wish I could. Mm hmm. But I've got mouths to feed. We've got, uh, you know, food to put on the table, bills to pay. So to be at a place where, you know, that's why uh, you want to get to that place where it's optional. So then you're free mm-hmm. to do the giving, to do the serving, to to go on a an extended vacation. You know, so, you know, we have clients that, you know, retire and they and they buy an RV and then they go. And mm-hmm. so it's no longer, hey, I've got to I've got to plan around uh, some holidays. So I take less you know time off from work or yeah. I hope my employer has uh, unlimited PTO or worried about, you know, the, the clock, as it were. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's that day. And so that's important uh, to get there. So you're f- for the freedom to do these other things. Yeah. And so it, it is important just from that standpoint, the you know, the responsibility, the stress, everything that comes with that. And there's a freedom in that. Mm-hmm. But then also it's important because sometimes we don't have the choice. Right. Yep. And and that's what I like to tell people, you know, is sometimes every once in a while you run across someone who says, well, um, I love my job or I'm the, I'm the owner of this business. I'm, I'm never going to not work. I'm mm-hmm. always going to work. So I really don't need to plan for a day that makes work optional. And we always tell everybody, yes, everyone has to have the plan for that day, whether or not you actually retire, yep. whether or not you actually, you know, quit your job and go do something else where it doesn't require a paycheck or requires something less. You still have to be prepared because there's two reasons why work becomes optional. Mm-hmm. One reason is because you choose to do it. Yep. You choose a day where, you know what, from this day forward, I have enough assets, I've saved enough money, and therefore I'm going to do whatever I want to do at this point in my life. The other reason why work becomes optional is because you don't choose. Mm. And a lot of times we don't get to choose that for two reasons there as well, because number one, maybe health. Uh, All of a sudden, you may not have the health that you once had in order to do the job that provides that paycheck. So the right thing to do is to always plan to make work optional. Mm -hmm. And if if health becomes a reason, then you're going to be glad you planned. Um, If you don't want to make work optional, you want to keep working, but you know you can stop working any day in the future, that's always a great day too. And then the other reason is because you may have an employer, you may work for a great company right now and things change. And all of a sudden, Mm -hmm. uh, you against your will or against, uh, you know, what you thought might happen, you may lose that job. Um, And there's a lot of downsizing that takes place. And uh, even though it may not be planned, it may not be expected, uh, these things still do happen. So everybody needs the plan for that day when work is optional because you choose to do it or because something or someone else chooses that for you. Yeah. That's important. It it, it certainly is. And yeah, I I talk to my fair share of people who love to work. Right. And they they do. They say, never work. But, you know, even just 
realistically, the, the, the pandemic, you know, from several years ago, that, that was something that just highlighted again mm-hmm. for, pa- uh, for people, the mm-hmm. fact that, one, we can't always take health for granted. Right. And two, mm-hmm. we can't even always take our job for granted. We're, we're not always in control of that, even if right. you are a business owner. Right. We are not in control of <clears throat> everything around us. And yeah. so planning is important. It's important to have a plan for that day. And what we found a lot of times is we're doing planning for our clients when they have a day in the future where work is optional. And let's just say that it's age, you know, 65. Yep. The plan was, hey, by age 65 and on, I want to have work only as an option, even though I may, my goal might be to work until 68, 69, 70. But at least I know that I'm working because I want to. I don't mm-hmm. have to. The plan allows me to retire at age 65, even though my goal is to work till 70. Yeah. There's something different about going to work every day when you're 65 to age 70, knowing mm-hmm. that you don't have to be there. Mm-hmm. There's something different about going to work every day from 65 to 70, knowing that at any point in time, because of health or because your employer changes or just because you don't want to anymore, you could stop working. Mm-hmm. So just because you make a plan that says, I want to make work optional by this certain age in the future doesn't mean you have have to retire on that day it just uh in our experience it tends to make work a lot more enjoyable yes. every day when you're going there not because you have to because you actually just want to do it knowing that any day of the week i could quit working and i know that i've got a paycheck absolutely yeah so it, it, it is really important to do to be able to plan yeah. to make work optional and so and, and the other reason that it's important so there's all of those reasons are mm. the reasons why people should plan. But then from our standpoint, when we're putting together a retirement income plan, we have to have a date. I mean, right. we, we mm. can't build a retirement plan yeah. without a date. I mean, what is That's it you right. say? There's always two things we have yeah. to know. Yeah. In order to put together a retirement income plan, we have to know two things when and how much. Yeah. And a lot of times people, they struggle with that. Yeah. Even though that seems simple, we got to know. So in other words, uh, there has to be a date in the future in order to put together a plan. But it goes back to what we were just talking about. It doesn't mean that that's the date you have to retire. Yes. It just means that's the date by when you want to make sure you have enough assets and it's allocated in the right way so that work is optional. So the best way to do that for most people is to be conservative. In order to be conservative, you choose a, a, maybe a a, uh, a date earlier than you might actually want to retire. Mm-hmm. So, for example, a great date for people to plan for retirement might be full retirement age. Yes. And for most people listening to this, it's probably age 67. So you might say, ideally, I want to wait till full retirement age, but I want my plan to be based on age 65 like we just talked about a minute ago, or Mm -hmm. I'd like to work till 70, but I want my plan to be built on age 67. So the conservative way to do it is to choose an earlier date because you know if you can do that date, you can always do a later date. And so people, when when we're putting together plans, you, you have to pick a date. And what happens a lot of times is you know, we put together an initial plan based on that age. Let's say it's age 62. There's no right or wrong number. Nope. We tell everybody this. We have to start somewhere. You may look at this and look at a plan that says, hey, I want to make work optional at age 62. We put together the plan and you look at that and say, oh, well, if it's going to be like that, I'd rather w- rather push it out a little longer. Or if it's, it looks that good at age 62, what would age 60 look like? So in other words, the initial plan has to have a win. What is that date? Mm-hmm. Obviously, it has to be realistic, uh, but our job is to try to get people to to that number um, as soon as possible, as safely as possible. But then what would it look like at that age? Mm-hmm. And then we can adjust it from there. Yeah. But it's very important, you know, when and, and how much. I know we uh, that's another discussion probably for another time. There's a lot that goes into that. But the, those are the two main variables in order to put together a plan. Yeah, absolutely. And so... So making work optional, we know what it is, why it's important, and when, you know, some people have a very specific date in mind. And, yeah, yeah, I've talked to some, they're like, oh, October 13th of 2025, why? Because (laughs) I'll be there 30 years, and that's when I want to call it quits. And so, and there's nothing wrong with that. Some people have that very Mm -hmm. specific date in mind, and that's great. But for those who don't, what I'm hearing you say is a good general rule of thumb, if you don't know where Mm -hmm. to start. Because maybe you just haven't thought about it or you're not sure or you enjoy working, whatever the reason, yeah. either full retirement age yeah. is a good starting point or at least when you're eligible for Medicare, age yeah. 65. Healthcare is one of the most expensive mm-hmm. items in retirement. Yeah. 
And so any healthcare yeah. issues prior to mm-hmm. Medicare age <clears throat> becomes even more expensive yeah. and harder to cover. Yeah, it's one thing when, when a client tells us, you know, uh, you you pick the date. You know, when you think I should write, we can do that. We can't do the how much part, yeah. but I don't mind picking the date. Yeah. Okay. So if you don't know, I'll give you a date. You know what I mean? But if you don't know how much, uh, we really need to to figure that out together. But in the future, I agree with you 100. percent I think the earliest. You know, the other thing, too, Paul, is that uh, people are living a lot longer. I think people need to realize that. uh, So and that's why it's important to understand what do you want to do after you retire? And that's a whole nother discussion. What are you going to do when you're no longer working for a paycheck? But age 65 is one of those key ages just because you can go on Medicare or to lower your health care cost unless you really have planned ahead. Uh, unless you you have saved early and often, and, and for some of mm-hmm. you, you can you accumulated a lot of assets, then certainly you can. You just have to know that for those years before age sixty five, you're going to take that monthly health care bill, whatever it is, times one or two of you, and make sure you're just going to spend that down, mm-hmm. in essence. And so that's not right or wrong. You just have to know you have to have a lot of assets to be able to do that before sixty five. And then, uh, obviously, you know, if you take Social Security early, it's reduced, you know, from your full retirement age. So there's just things like that you have to be aware of. Mm-hmm. So 65 is a good starting point. Full retirement age is another one. Um, but certainly, you know, the earlier someone plans, the earlier someone can retire. Absolutely. Yeah, it's never too early to plan. That's right. So yep. definitely want to do that. Um, you know, the rest of the... M- the mission statement says to guide families on a path to make work optional, design a plan that gives them the freedom to give, serve, and enjoy like like never before. Mm-hmm. And so we talked about all that last season. We talked about making work optional today. And really how we do that mm-hmm. is by guiding families on a path. What does that yeah. mean? Yeah. Uh, The path is really the plan. Uh, It goes back to what we talked about at the beginning, which is Mm -hmm. first wisdom, then wealth. What do we mean by that? We mean first we put together a plan, then you make those decisions as a result of that plan. You build wealth on it. Same thing here. Uh, The path that makes work optional, the path that empowers the freedom to give, serve, and enjoy life all comes from the plan. And when we talk about the plan, uh, we're really talking about seven areas of a plan. And we can take those seven areas and break it down really into two broad categories. There's an income plan and there's an impact plan. Mm. And, uh, you know, really those are the two areas that you want to make sure you plan for in retirement. And there's three areas of an income plan, four areas of an impact plan. And uh, I look forward to telling everybody about uh, these, these these seven areas of planning. Yeah, I, I yeah. was wondering if I was going to have to cut you right. off because we're, we're running out of time <laughs> That's for right, this man. episode. So. Next episode, which everyone will want to uh, tune in for, mm-hmm. is going to talk about the seven areas of the plan. And then we're actually yeah. going to, throughout the rest of the season, dive deeper into each of those seven areas yep. as well. And so we've got a great season ahead yeah. for everyone. We look forward to having everyone here. You know, in the meantime, in between episodes, there are ways that you can still interact, still ways that you can learn. Again, we talked about it earlier. There's a book, and I know a revision of the book is coming soon. So depending on when you watch or listen to this, the new, the revised version may be Mm -hmm. out. But we still have the original Simplify Your Retirement book that people can get. If you if you need a copy of that, you can Mm -hmm. go on Amazon. You can email us info at Mm -hmm. simplifyyourretirement.com. We can send you a book. We have the book, the podcast. Now we have YouTube. Mm -hmm. We have the online course, simplifyyourretirement.com gives you access to all of those. Mm-hmm. You can find upcoming mm-hmm. classes and all of that. Great ways to be able to do it. But at the end of the day, wisdom is good, mm-hmm. but you have to do something with yeah. it, right? So if someone said, if someone's watching this today or they shared it with a friend, mm-hmm. their friend's watching it and says, I need to get a plan mm-hmm. together, what would be the next step for yeah. them? The best place to go uh, to take that step. You, you've heard the, uh, the podcast that you've watched it. You want to actually go ahead and meet with uh, someone who is trained in Simplify Your Retirement, trained in these principles, trained in the seven areas of planning, everything that we talked about today. Then you would just go to wisewealth.com. That's where we send people to. Go to that website. They're on there. You can contact us on there. You can request a um, a 15-minute introductory call. Uh, certainly, you can just call the office as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Our phone number is 816-246-WISE, 816-246-9473. So either call that number or go to wisewealth.com and uh, request a consultation. That's great. And so, yeah, definitely just take action. 
That's the yep. point. And so for everyone listening or watching today, there's something you can do. Whether it's sharing this episode with a friend, it's telling someone about it, maybe you've learned something that you need to take and uh, apply, or you can have that conversation with your spouse or your friends, whatever it is, there's something you can do with what you learned today. And so, you know, thank you, Stephen, for guiding us through this process, talking about what it means to make work optional. And of course, our last thank you goes to you, our listening audience. You are the reason we do this. We do this for you. Mm -hmm. We do this for our clients. And we wouldn't be here without you. You know, definitely take time to hit that subscribe button. Mm -hmm. Because when a new episode comes out, like the next one, where we talk about the seven areas that a plan should have, the income planning part of it and the impact planning part of it, you don't want to miss that episode and you'll be notified right away. If you're on YouTube, subscribe, like, share, mm -hmm. do all of that. But the, it makes it easier for you to be able to know when new content comes out and easier to be able to share with family and friends. We don't want to leave this information. We're putting this out there for you, mm -hmm. but also for you to be able to share with people you care about because everyone is going to have a day when they don't work for a paycheck. Mm -hmm. And so they need to plan for that. And that's what we're here for to be able to help them do that. So again, thank you, Stephen, for all that. You know, and again, thank you all for tuning in. And for all of us at Wise Wealth, this is Paul Brock. And remember, financial peace comes from having a plan. We'll see you next time.